Welcome to From His Heart with Pastor Jeff Shreve, who's in his new and timely series, The Joy of Christmas. If you're experiencing the joy of believing, then you'll be thrilled to encounter the joy of obedience. If you have your Bible, please turn to Matthew chapter 1. We started a new series uh, last week for December for Christmas time and entitled The Joy of Christmas. And uh, today, last week we talked about Mary and the joy of believing. Blessed is she, Elizabeth said, who believed in the message, that the message would be fulfilled that had been delivered to her. And Mary did believe. Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, be it done to me according to your word. Well, today we want to talk about the joy of obedience. See, Christmas is about joy, good news of a great joy which shall be for all the people, and there's great joy in believing, and there's great joy in obeying. Now, Mary is, we could say she's the poster child of believing God, and Joseph it believed God also, but he's kind of focused in on obeying God. Now, those two things go hand in hand, but we're going to see with Joseph, because the Bible doesn't say a lot about him, the stepfather of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have a lot of time and space given in Scripture for Joseph, but every time the Bible does talk about him, and Matthew talks about him more than any of the other gospel writers, Mark doesn't even mention him, but any time Joseph is mentioned, he's hearing from God and doing what God tells him to do. So let's look at what Matthew has to say concerning the birth of Jesus Christ. I'll begin reading in verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man, and not wanting to disgrace her, desired to put her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus means Jehovah saves. Now all this took place that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph arose from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took her as his wife and kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Have you entered into the joy of obeying God? There's no joy in disobeying God. There is joy in obeying God. Have you entered into that joy? I want you to see from the text we just read three insights concerning Joseph and the joy that he had obeying the Lord. Insight number one, sometimes we struggle to know what God wants us to do. Situations can happen in our lives where it's not really clear cut what we're supposed to do. And Joseph is a guy that had that happen to him. And so here he is, he's all excited because he and Mary are in this betrothal period, they're going to get married and she's excited, he's excited, and then everything uh, changes when the message comes to her that she's going to be the mother of the Christ child and the virgin is going to be with child. Well, as we talked last week, when she gets that message, the angel Gabriel tells her also, Elizabeth, your relative is in her sixth month and uh, nothing shall be impossible with God, no word shall be impossible with God. And she hightails it to 
the hill country of Judea, which is an 80 to 100 mile trip from where she lived in Nazareth, to see Elizabeth. She stayed with Elizabeth three months, and then she comes back to Nazareth, and she breaks the news to Joseph that she is with child, but she is with child by the Holy Spirit. And lo and behold, Joseph doesn't believe her. Now, you can't fault him. Who would believe that? He's a righteous man. He, he thought he knew her. He thought he knew her character, but obviously he didn't. Now, he is betrayed. He is feeling those feelings. He's feeling the feeling of embarrassment. He's feeling the feeling of being deceived because Mary presented herself as this chaste, pure girl, and she's obviously not chaste and pure. He knew that this baby's not my baby, and you say it's God's baby? Well, that, that just seems crazy. And then he feels like she's just lying straight to his face. Because it's like, hey, I'm right here, and you're still telling me this fish story. So he didn't know what to do. He was contemplating what to do, and he said, well, maybe I need to just uh, divorce her secretly. I don't need to make a spectacle of it. I don't need to bring her in, in front of the city gate and shame her to death. I'll just do it separately. He was kind of at a crossroads. And, you know, that can happen to us. You know, sometimes we can be in a situation where we're not really sure what does God want me to do. And the reason why we can get there is because circumstances can be heartbreaking and difficult. Circumstances that come into your life, circumstances that come into my life, I mean, they can be such that it just shatters your heart. That is Joseph. And so here's Joseph, and he's been hurt, and now he's got to deal with anger. And if you don't deal right with the anger that will always come when you get hurt, then you're going to go into a place called resentment and bitterness. The Bible says, be angry, Ephesians 4, 26, be angry and do not sin, and don't let the sun go down on your anger, and do not give the devil a place. Don't give him an opportunity, because if you let the sun go down on your anger, the hurt turns to anger. The anger, if it's not dealt with, it turns to bitterness. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, see to it that no one comes short of the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, and by it many be defiled. Joseph could have gotten bitter at Mary. No doubt he was hurt. No doubt he was dealing with anger, but he could have gotten bitter at her. He didn't. And we know that he didn't because it says very clearly in verse 19, he was not wanting to disgrace her. He desired to put her away secretly. If he was bitter at her, he would want to run her through the coals. I'm going to put you up before the people, and everybody's going to see you for the person that you are and what you did to me, and I want a pound of flesh. He wasn't going to do that. He loved Mary. He was heartbroken, yes, but he wasn't bitter. He was keeping his heart open to the Lord. Hey, circumstances can be heartbreaking and difficult, and in the midst of that, keeping your heart sensitive to the Lord is critical. It's critical. We're talking about the joy of obeying God, and in the situations where it's not real clear-cut, what am I supposed to do? It is very, very important that you hear from God, and you got to keep your heart open to Him so it doesn't get bitter toward Him. The Bible says, today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your heart. And many people, because of circumstances of life, they've allowed themselves to get bitter. They've allowed their hearts to get hard. And as it says in the book of Hebrews, concerning Him, we have much to say, and it's hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. You've stopped trying to understand. You don't hear uh, anymore because your heart has gotten hard, your ears are stopped up, and you've not, you're not maintaining a sensitive heart to the Lord. Now, the question can come in, and it says this, well, when something terrible happens, somebody does something terrible to you or, or some situation that is very hurtful that comes into your life, how do you deal with that? Because if, if the hurt turns to anger, then what do I do with the anger? Ada Ferguson used to always use those three little words, sad, mad, bad. Sad, mad, bad. 
You know, when the hurt comes, you're sad, and then the sad turns to mad, and you've got to deal with that. You've got to process the anger so it doesn't turn bad, so you don't get bitter. And David tells us how to do that in Psalm 62, verse 8. He says this, trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Hey, when the hurt comes in, you need to take it to the Lord. You need to pour out your heart to him. You need to share with him all the pain and all the, the difficulty that you're going through. You need to share your frustration with him. You need to, to pour that out to him. Insight number one, sometimes we struggle to know what God wants us to do. Insight number two, we can be assured that God will show us what to do. God will show us what to do when, big caveat here, when our hearts are sensitive to the Lord, when we're still seeking Him, when we're practicing Psalm 62, verse 8, and trusting in Him and pouring out our heart to Him, when we're not allowing our heart to get, to get hardened and bitter and our ears to get dull and slow to understand. Now, remember... When God shows you, his plan for your life will never contradict his word. So Joseph goes to sleep, and the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Now, it's not a dream like you and I will have dreams, and we dream that all of a sudden we're flying. Uh, you ever have that dream? Uh, that's a cool dream. You ever have the dream you're still in school and you didn't know you had chemistry class and there's a final? Uh, that's a scary dream. I have dreams periodically where I'm supposed to preach and I didn't know, and it's like, hey, you're up. This isn't a dream like that where it's just all imagined in your head. This, in his sleep, the Lord appeared to him. It's real. It's real. And the Scripture says that the angel comes, the angel of the Lord says to him, Joseph, son of David. Verse 20, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, son of David. Joseph is in the line of King David. We get that from Matthew's genealogy. Jesus isn't related to Joseph, but he's going to become Joseph's son, his stepson, and so he's going to inherit the rights of his father, and so he's going to be in that lineage by adoption, we would say. But Mary is also in the lineage of King David, and Jesus is related to Mary because he is the son of God, son of Mary. And so he, either way you come at it, Luke's genealogy traces Jesus through Mary. Matthew's genealogy traces, traces Jesus through Joseph, but he is both. He has the authority uh, from being the stepson of Joseph. He has the authority in the bloodline of David from Mary, and he is also the son of God. And so the angel said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Don't be afraid to do that because what she told you is exactly right. That which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, just like she told you. Verse 21, and she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. You don't call his name Joseph. He's not going to be Bar Joseph. You know, they use that a lot. Bar, uh, blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah. Bar Jonah was son of Jonah. He's not going to be Bar Joseph. He is Jesus. Jehovah saves, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. And it says in verse 22, all this took place that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 7, 14 might be fulfilled when Isaiah said to King Ahaz in the 700s B.C., he said, God is going to give you a sign, Ahaz. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And that was a dual prophecy, as it says in one of the commentaries I read that, that I think is spot on. This has a prophecy for Ahaz, the king, who was king in Judah in the 700s B.C., and also a prophecy that was true at the birth of Jesus, at the conception of Jesus. See, in Ahab's kingdom, there was a virgin that was going to give, get married and have a baby, and they were going to name that baby Emmanuel, 
And before that baby was going to be weaned from his mother, the kings that Ahaz was so afraid of, they were going to, to die. That was the sign that he got. So many prophecies in the Old Testament are dual. They, they come soon and then they come later. This is one of those dual prophecies and it happened just like the Lord had prophesied. There was coming a virgin, never known a man, who was going to conceive and she was going to bear his son and they were going to call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel is really not a name that anyone called Jesus. Jesus is, is that's not a, a, a name that, that they would, they called him the Nazarene, uh, Yahshua and Zara, Jesus of Nazareth, but nobody says, uh, there's Emmanuel. Jesus, Emmanuel is more of a description. He is God with us because he is the son of God. His plan for you and for me, it will never contradict his word and his plan will always be for your good. Always, because God's a good God. Romans chapter 12 says, do not be confused, or do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is. What is the will of God? That which is good and acceptable, well-pleasing, and perfect. Perfect. It's tailor-made for you. That is God's will for you, God's will for me, because God is a good God. So we can be assured if we're seeking the Lord, he says, Jeremiah 29, 13, and you'll seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. If you're keeping your heart soft and tender and seeking the Lord and pouring out your heart to him, he will show you what to do. And then insight number three, we will be blessed when we do what he says to do. Sometimes we don't know what to do. And then we can be assured that if I keep seeking the Lord, he's going to show me what to do. And then we're blessed when we do what he says to do. Verse 24, and Joseph arose from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took her as his wife and kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son and he called his name Jesus. He did exactly what he was told to do. Exactly what he was told to do. He was obedient to the Lord. Now, three lessons that we learn from his obedience. Lesson number one, obey the Lord immediately. Joseph didn't say, well, you know, I mean, I, that's kind of a weird dream I had. Uh, that, it seems so real, but I don't know. Man, let, me, let me think on that for a while. No, he, he arose and he did what God told him to do, what was commanded him to do. I'm going to marry Mary right then. Now, remember this. Okay, so she gets the word, Mary does, and she conceives when she believes she conceived. And then she goes to Elizabeth's. It would have taken 80 to 100 miles. It would have taken her a, a while to get there. And then she's with Elizabeth for three months approximately three months, and then she goes back to Nazareth, 80 to 100 miles, and then she tells Joseph, and then Joseph is swirling and trying to figure out what to do. It's probably about four months into her pregnancy when Joseph marries her. It's going to be very obvious. You know, the people back then, uh, just like the people today, everybody can do math. You can figure it out nine months. Okay, you, it's five months, you have a baby. So they're going to say, Either Joseph and Mary didn't wait, or Mary was with someone else, and that was the, the skeptics always say, well, you know, I mean, they, they can't believe in the virgin birth. The skeptics and the, the haters of the Bible, of course, you can't believe in the virgin birth because that would take a miracle. And so they say, well, you know, there was some Roman soldier that she had a one-night stand with, and, and that's how that all happened. So Joseph had to endure all that. And the scripture talks about, you read in the Gospels, there are little digs uh, to Jesus about being illegitimate because people knew about him that she was pregnant before they got married. Joseph did it immediately. It wasn't easy, but he did. He obeyed the Lord. The Bible says today, if you hear, your, hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today, if you hear his voice, do what he says. Why would we not want to obey him? Obey the Lord immediately. Secondly, obey the Lord completely. Completely. He took Mary as his wife. 
He kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son. He named that son Jesus. He could have said, well, I, I'm going to marry her, but I don't like the name Jesus. I like the name Joe Jr. Let's go with that name. He didn't do that. He did exactly what was mentioned, and he didn't touch her. He marries her, but he doesn't touch her until after Jesus is born. He doesn't consummate the marriage until after Jesus is born. Now, you may hear in other churches, uh, I say other churches, in the Catholic Church, they have a teaching that Mary was a perpetual virgin. They don't get that from the Bible. The Scripture is very clear. It lists the names of Jesus' family members. James was one of his family members. He wrote the epistle called James. He was the leader of the early church, Acts chapter 15. Jesus had brothers and sisters. They were stepbrothers and sisters because Jesus had a different father. But Joseph kept her a virgin until Jesus was born, and then it was like, hey, we're married. Uh, let's, let's enjoy marital life. And Mary was like, yeah, let's do that. But he obeyed completely. Listen, you write this down. Partial obedience is disobedience. Partial obedience is disobedience. The Lord said to Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate it on, on it day and night so that you may be careful to do all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Obey immediately, obey completely, and obey confidently. You can be confident that God will bless you when you obey him. The Bible says, don't be a forgetful hearer. Somebody who hears the word and doesn't apply it to their lives. They hear it, but they don't observe it. Jesus said, if you do that, you're, you're a man who builds his house on the sand. He who hears these words of mine and does not act upon him is like a man who builds his house on the sand. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and burst against that house and great was its fall. But if you hear his words and you act upon him, you put him to practice in your life, the rains descend and the floods came and the winds blow because they do that for every person, but the house will stand because it's founded on the rock. James says, don't be a forgetful hearer. Be an effectual doer. He says, the one who is an, an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does. You want to be blessed? You want to be blessed? Obey God. There's a little progression that I like that says this. To know God is to love God. To love God is to trust God. To trust God is to obey God, and to obey God is to be blessed. You want to be blessed? Do what he says. Obey him. If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. And if you have a purpose, you have a praise. And it's not too late to say, yes, Lord, I will obey you from here on out. The Lord thy God is a sun and a shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. My friend, now is the time to do business with God. If you're watching and you're not sure about your relationship with Jesus, this is what I want you to do. Just pray and say, Lord, I want to know you in a real and personal way. I don't want to know about you. I want to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus, I'm a sinner and I'm lost and I can't save myself, but I believe that you are God in the flesh. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. And right now I surrender my heart, my life to you. Come into my life, forgive me of all my sins, be my Lord and Savior, I surrender myself to you. My friend, if you'll pray that kind of prayer and mean it, the Lord will come in and your life will never be the same. I'd love to hear from you, to know that you're watching, to know that God is using this broadcast to make a difference in your life, to know that you just prayed that prayer to receive Christ as Savior and Lord. Please take the time to call that toll-free number, write me, email me, let me know what's going on and how we can pray for you. You really are important to God, and you're important to us, and we're here for you. Today's message, 
The Joy of Obedience is from Pastor Jeff Shreve's new series, The Joy of Christmas. Both the series and the individual message are available in multiple formats when you call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. Before we close out the year, there's something really important I need to ask you. You see, while this year's been really tough for all of us, we've also seen more people than ever engage with our teaching content on television, radio, and online. Hey, God is really using us to bring real hope to more lives than ever before. And that's why I'd like to ask you to join us in this effort to help us reach our challenging end of the year goal of $350,000. This amount will provide the needed financial support to expand the ministry in 2021 so we can speak the truth and love to many more hearts and homes around the world. Now, I realize $350,000 is not a small amount, but when you look at the lives that are being challenged and changed by the Word of God, you can trust it's an investment that makes an eternal difference in a multitude of lives. Now, with your gift of $25 or more, I'd like to say thanks by sending you a beautiful, brand new, year-long daily devotional book called The Spirit of God Within You. I contributed to this devotional along with 50 other pastors and Christian leaders. I trust this book will bless your life each day of the new year. Thank you for your very best year in gift so together we can impact more souls for Jesus Christ. God bless you. To get the new year-long daily devotional book, The Spirit of God Within You, you can make your gift of $25 or more when you call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. And thank you for extending your influence for Christ around the world through From His Heart. From His Heart is the viewer-supported broadcast ministry of Dr. Jeff Shreve, who believes that no matter how badly you may have messed up in life, God still loves you, and He has a wonderful plan for your life. You can find out more about that plan. Go to fromhisheart.org. Real truth, real